Hi, this is Mrs Sykes and I'm going to talk you through some examples of how we calculate surface area to volume ratio for simple cubes. The aim of this video is for you to not watch all of it. I want you to watch up until you know what you are doing. And when you know what you are doing, turn it off and then do the work yourself. If you then want to put it back on to check that you've got it right, fine. If you want to keep it going the entire time and do all of the calculations with me, fine. The second part of the video goes through the questions that check your understanding of what these calculations mean. So if you're happy with the maths, you might want to skip the mathsy bit and fast forward to when we look at the meaning of the numbers. Okay, let's get started. So we've got a one centimeter cube so it's got one centimetre down, across and along. Two centimetre cube and a three centimetre cube. First thing we're going to do is we're going to work out our surface area. Then we're going to work out our volume. And then we're going to work out our surface area to volume ratio. And then we're going to write in words whether that's small, medium and large for each one. Because knowing whether a small cube has a small, medium or a large surface area allows you to kind of get your head around what the maths actually means. So, let's begin then. Now we've already talked in a previous video about calculating surface area to volume ratio. And the net of a cube has six sides. That's why we've got here six times whatever it is that we're doing. So you work out the surface area of one of these cubes here, one little side there. And then you times it by six because there will be six of them on the cube. So this one here is one centimetre by one centimetre and there are six of them. So one by one by one times six. Now I'm going to write mine out using brackets but I'm going to use my calculator without them because those of you who are confident using brackets won't need me to show you those sections. So one by one gives us one times six giving us six. So the surface area for this cube is six. Now I'm going to do the whole of the calculation for one centimetre and then I'll do two and three each stage at a time so you can really see the pattern. So we've got six and then we need a unit. It's centimetres squared and it's centimetres squared because we've got two dimensions here, that one and that one. That one doesn't really count. Okay, so we're squared. The volume is that side times that side times that side. So in this case, we've got one times one times one. Again, using my calculator. One by one by one, which will give us one. But because we've had three things that we've times together this time, we now have centimeters cubed. So there's a little three which floats over the end. Surface area to volume ratio is our surface area number divided by our volume number. So we have got six divided by one. Six divided by one. Now some of you won't need to do that on a calculator because that number will just make sense in your head and that's fine. So we've got six but this is surface area to volume ratio. So that means that if you've written six in that box, you have got it wrong because it has to be a ratio. So you need to add to one next to it, six to one. We're gonna come back to this when we've got all of the numbers alongside each other. Now for cubes two and three, I'm gonna do surface area for both, then volume for both, then surface area to volume ratio for both, so that you can see the patterns that we're going through for each step. So, this one has a surface area of that square of two centimetres by two. There are six of them. So we do, on our calculator, two by two equals, so we're getting four, times six, so that we've got all six sides, which will give us 24. And we are centimetres squared because we are still in two dimensions. And now we're going to do this one. So we've got... 3 by 3 square, and we've got 6 of them, so 3 
by three, gives us nine. Well, I'm gonna jot that down, so I don't forget. So we've got nine times six, which will give us 54. So we've now got 54 centimeters squared. So we did nine times six, if anybody wanted to remember that. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the volume section. So the volume is how much stuff would fit into those different cubes. So we've got here two times two times two. Two times two times two, which will give us eight. Now, for those of you who are more happy with using calculators, feel free to use any of the squared or cubed functions as you want to. No problem with that. Centimeters cubed, because we have had one, two, three dimensions that we've dealt with. For our three centimeter, it is three by three by three. So three times three times three. And that gives us 27. 27 centimetres cubed. Now we're going to use the 24, the 8, 54 and the 27 to work out our ratios. So we're going to take the 24, because it's surface area divided by volume. We're going to take our volume, which is 8. So 24 divided by 8. And we're going to get 3. And that becomes 3 to 1, because we're still wanting to calculate a ratio. And over here, we have got 54 divided by 27. 54 divided by 27, which gives us two. So we now have a ratio of two to one. Now, we've got our numbers. We've got six to one, three to one, two to one. You now need to decide which of these is large, medium, and small. And it is the six the three and the two that we are talking about. So of the six, of the three and of the two, which is the large, which is the medium, which is the small. So this is our large number. So it has a large surface area to volume ratio. This is our medium sized number. So it has a medium sized surface area to volume ratio. And in comparison to the others, this one has a small surface area to volume ratio. And that's the first part of what I've set you to do. Now what we need to do, though, is make sense of why this even vaguely matters in terms of biology. So, these are the questions that I have set you, which are very straightforward, to check that you know what's going on. So, question one. Does the one centimetre or the three centimetre cube have the small surface area to volume ratio? So to work that out, you need to go back to your answers and have a look at what you've got. So we've got small underneath the three because it's a two to one ratio. So the three centimetre one is our small surface area to volume ratio. It's a small amount of spread out in this. The jellyfish has a large surface area to volume ratio. Right, okay, fair enough. Does it get a small or a large amount of its nutrients from diffusion? If it is spread out, how much diffusion will happen? All right, okay. So if you had a little, if you had a, just a blob, not much would happen. But if you're a jellyfish, and you're all spread out, Diffusion can take place lots of different positions. So a jellyfish has a large amount of spread out in this, and therefore a large amount of diffusion can happen. So if you have a large surface area to volume ratio, a large amount of diffusion will take place. If you have a small surface area to volume ratio, a small amount of diffusion will take place. Okay, question three. If an animal has a small surface area volume to ratio, does it get a small or a large amount of its nutrients from diffusion? Small, because not much can go in and out. Okay, if plant roots have a small surface area to volume ratio, does it get a small or a large amount of its nutrients from diffusion? Again, I'm talking through my thought process here to help you understand how I'm doing it. 
Well, if the animal had a small surface area to volume ratio and it got a small amount, it shouldn't matter that it's a plant. So if it's small, it should be small again. It only gets a small amount of its stuff by diffusion. Question five. Single-celled organisms can rely on diffusion alone to get all the nutrients they need and get rid of all their waste. Okay. Do single-celled organisms have a small or a large surface area to volume ratio? Well, if a lot of diffusion is taking place, there's a large amount of diffusion, they must have a large amount of spread outedness, like here, so therefore they must have a large surface area to volume ratio. And that actually fits with what we've seen here. The smallest cube had a large surface area to volume ratio. And that makes sense that a small cell would have a large surface area to volume ratio. Does that make sense? Question six. Why will a small surface area to volume ratio animal need a transport system, e.g. heart and blood vessels, and not simply rely on diffusion to deliver oxygen to all of its cells? And that's a lovely question. I quite happily write you a little essay on that. But we only need to give a certain amount of information here. I would actually start, confusingly, by talking about large surface areas of volume ratios. So I would say, if an animal has a large surface area to volume ratio, that means that it has a large amount of spread outedness. which means that it has a large rate of diffusion. So if it has a large amount of diffusion, because it's largely spread out, it doesn't need a transport system. So again, returning to our obvious example of the jellyfish, it doesn't have a transport system, because it doesn't need one, because it's so spread out. Diffusion is good enough. But if you have an animal that's got a small surface area to volume ratio, which is what the question was focusing on, then things are a little bit different. It has a small amount of spread outedness, so it's basically a big blob. And if it's a big blob, there's not much space for diffusion to take place. So therefore we have a small amount of diffusion. Well, this animal needs to be able to spread out its oxygen, its glucose and its other nutrients somehow. So it spreads out these nutrients by using the heart and the blood vessels. It uses its transport system to spread everything out because its body isn't spread out, but its heart and its blood can spread the oxygen. Its heart and its blood can spread the glucose. So, equals transport system spreads it out. Hmm. So let's check the question. Why will a small surface area to volume ratio animal need a transport system? and not simply rely on diffusion to deliver oxygen to all of its cells. Small surface area means small, small diffusion, transport system spreads it out, uh, diffuse, so I need more information here. I need diffusion is too slow. And it's so slow because the surface area to volume ratio is so small, it would take ages to get to where we needed. 